Where does inspiration come from? That's a very interesting question. Um, My name is Gerald Moore. I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Being an artist was not my original intent in life, though I was inclined to be an artist from a very young age, like four years old. Long story. Uh, but I started making comic book characters out of clay, mythological characters out of clay, but I had no idea it was art. I actually wanted to be a writer. Uh, where does inspiration come from? That's a very interesting question. Um, Without sounding super spiritual, I believe all inspiration comes from God, from Creator, however you want to frame that. So to me, it's that context in which inspiration comes and through which I try to work. But it's my relationship to God that allows me to create. Yeah, it is who and what is the biggest influence in my artistry. That's a good question. Um, yeah, it's slightly different um, because I feel inspired by a lot of cultural figures. Um, I can't name a single one. Uh, top of my head, I'd say John Coltrane, but what does that mean? Because I'm, I'm not a musician. But his artistry reminds me of what art is all about. Um, Thelonious Monk, a lot of musicians, uh, even athletes, people that you normally wouldn't consider to be in the arts, comes from everywhere. Um, but it's my relationship to the process of learning and appreciating the work of others um, kind of guides that inspirational and uh, informational work that I do. I'm at the point now where I'm seriously considering, as we speak in this moment, uh, discarding the word artist. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while because I really believe it's obsolete and I'm not sure that it applies to what I do. So the category would be, um, I consider myself to be a creative disturbance of the design continuum. Let me repeat that. I am simply a creative disturbance of the design continuum. That means for me, um, it goes far beyond the conventional sense of painting, sculpture, dance, music, whatever, into something more holistic, more organic, and at the same time, more conceptual. It's about how we're processing information and energy between ourselves as human beings, what that means to us, how we participate in each other's lives, how the objects, if I make an object, because it's not always about making an object, how that has currency with my audience or to the observers. I think that kind of goes far beyond like the conventional sense of what art is. So I'm really looking uh, to answer that question uh, as I go forward. So and I don't know what I'll find, but I, I get the feeling that it won't be quote unquote art per se. I, I want them to participate in the creative process, not just with my work, but everywhere they go, everything they do. I want them to become one with the creative process. I want to facilitate that. Uh, that's what I want. That's what I want the takeaway to be. When they, when they walk away from a conversation with me or an engagement with my work, I want them to feel compelled to engage more deeply and meaningfully in the creative process, 
whether they consider themselves to be an artist or not. And that's why, again, I think it goes outside of the conventional ideas about art. Art is not something special to me or Coltrane or anybody else. Not that I'm putting myself in the category with Coltrane, but any other artist. It's every human being. What makes us human is our creativity and our sense of design and the intelligent way in which we engage and continue that process of creativity and design. That's what makes us human. So every human being has it. Some of us just forget. What I'm proud of, um, but it's the piece that engages me the most. Um, and it's the most important piece to me. It's called The Game. And The Game is an interactive, conceptual performance work of art that has evolved into an educational training and communication tool. I've been obsessed with it for uh, like 10 years. Um, like I said, it's interactive, it's conceptual, and it's performance-based. Um, and I'm not sure it's art, uh, but its goal is to create something beautiful and meaningful. Uh, it's interactive because I invite people to play it. That's why it's called the game. So I invite other people to create with me to make something. And that's what's most important to me right now, my work with the game. What is the role of the artist in society? I think we touched on that a little bit. I, I, I think it's to facilitate the creative process in oneself and in others. So if you go back traditionally, especially from like an Afrocentric perspective, it's deeply spiritual, um, but it's also very practical. There's a craftsmanship that you provide for the society. You become a repository for ideas and techniques and information and experiences that otherwise might not be available to the community, the society at large. And so you serve that role, but in serving that role, I think what's paramount is the spiritual imperative. Like you are guiding people to a more truthful relationship with themselves and with the world uh, by seeking it out first for yourself to make sure like this is what I see is correct. Even if it's unseeable, if it's a truth that we can't even see with our eyes, it can be communicated through art. And but I need to know that it's true before I don't want to give no, I don't want to give you something that's not true. So I, I need to verify my own vision first, and then I have a responsibility to my community, to my society, to others, to communicate that to them, to share. So to seek out, to share, and then to celebrate that which we find. And we should just cycle that through again and again. I think that's the role of a quote unquote artist in any society, not just Afrocentric, but where we're at right now. Thank you.